morning, CB, and welcome to this super Tuesday edition of KBFT. On today's show, we'll bring you an update on Occupy Sacramento. Plus, we'll explain exactly what Super Tuesday means. But first, why were all these people you see behind us protesting outside the state capitol? I went to go take a look. I'm Alex Daly, standing outside the state capitol where something truly extraordinary is underway. Mere days ago, people would have called the Occupy Sacramento protest dead. And whether or not the protesters here, hundreds of them, associate themselves with this movement, there's definitely the spirit of Occupy here at the state capitol. If you can look behind me, you see the police have already established a perimeter around the state capitol building. They're saying that they're going to force people out by 6 o'clock. At 5.30, we're still waiting to see whether or not protesters will be here well into the evening. It's a sight that's becoming increasingly familiar. Hundreds of protesters, of all ages and backgrounds, marched on the steps of the Capitol building, demanding reforms in public education. The purpose of this protest fell under a vague umbrella of spending cuts in education. But it was this ambiguity that gave off the distinctive atmosphere of a revived Occupy Sacramento. Hundreds of what were presumably students, educators, and parents joined in this chaotic movement. It was a sight to behold. A formidable line of police outfitted in riot gear kept the crowd controlled from the front, while journalists formed their own perimeter on the outskirts, furiously compiling their stories for the next newscast. We approached the barricade to find one man in a camouflage jacket sitting on the ground in front of the police. He gave a small speech describing his intent to remain seated at the foot of the Capitol until forcibly moved. Reports filed after we left indicate that the officers enforced their ultimatum. Most, though, were not nearly as extreme in their actions, but just as strong in their convictions. I chatted with a group of university students who described their motivation for attending. Bringing awareness to issues that are happening on every campus, and what's great about it is it's not just UCs, it's not Cal State, it's CCs, it's K through 12. Everyone is taking this uh, united front on the attack on education. Not only has there been the, like really huge cuts to education, but it's also uh, been completely restructured in a negative way. They're advocating for the millionaires tax. I don't know if you've heard of that, but um, it's. It's a tax initiative that's in, yeah, in opposition to like Jerry Brown's tax initiative. And what exactly is this millionaire tax? It's a tax plan popular among the self-proclaimed 99%, but it also has a basis in government. In January 2012, President Obama called for American millionaires and billionaires to pay 30% of their income in taxes, their minimum fair share. So why was this point being raised at the capital of California? Protesters say that Governor Brown's tax plans are inadequate and that our educational system is taking the toll. It seems safe to say that upset over increased tuition rates and class sizes was a topic that everyone could agree on. But that's until we met a man who passed out flyers actually demanding UC students pay more, calling them leeches. My feeling is that students are essentially takers from society. They're not givers for the vast majority, especially all the ones that need support, kind of by definition, are takers. They're, they're not supporting other people. They're not doing things for other people. They're in the educational system to advantage themselves, of their own interest, or to further themselves financially. So I thought I'd pass out some flyers to this crowd here at the Capitol that said, students are leeches, raise tuition at UC. He never gave us his name, which was understandable considering his contrarian position. He was one of the several characters outside the Capitol Monday, all participating in a movement that continues to sweep the nation. And with the presidential election quickly approaching, characters and movements like these will help determine the future of our country. We are this has been Alex Daly, reporting for KBFT, Sacramento. You know, I gotta give a quick shout out to my little brother, Harrison Daly, who's in seventh grade. He was actually the photographer with me on that package. He went around, shot the video because it was sort of a last minute assignment. So Another you know, daily prodigy. Well, you know, I don't know about that, but I do know, Kate, that you were actually at the Occupy protest yourself. Like you went there in the morning, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I was there around 10 o'clock and students were completely surrounding the Capitol. There were hundreds of police officers there. And while I was there, I noticed that most of the college students were saying that college is, is becoming something more for the rich and the elite rather than middle class, hardworking students. And I completely agree with that. Well, then you must, have, you must have something to say about that guy who we interviewed at the very end of the package who was saying that students are essentially leeches, they don't contribute anything to society. It's a pretty extreme view. That is extremely uh, extreme. And so, I, yeah, I disagree with him. I don't think students are 
too dependent at all. I don't think they're leeches. They completely contribute to society because we're the future nurses, journalists, politicians. So I think what he's saying is just wrong. <laughs> well, you know, it's an important discussion to have no matter what side you fall on. But as you can clearly see behind me, I think this picture was taken in the morning, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Thousands of people outside the Capitol. They're projecting 10,000. Maybe we didn't get to that, but certainly there were thousands of people there protesting the, uh, the reforms in education. Very controversial. History in the making, but let's talk a bit about history that's already happened. History here at CB. We've been bringing you a lot of different segments about the history of Christian Brothers High School. Let's take a look at our most recent installment. John Watts Mails, a.k.a. Walter the Great, or Duster, was born on October 1st, 1894, outside the walls San Quentin Prison. He attended Christian Brothers. After graduating, he moved on to St. Mary's College. He began his professional baseball career just before his 21st birthday with the Brooklyn Robins. Robins was a nickname used by the Brooklyn Dodgers from 1914 to 1931. Being 6 feet tall, 195 pounds, Mills was a powerful southpaw, which means left-handed pitcher who gained the alias duster he said i didn't deliberately try to dust the batters off i simply couldn't make the ball go where i wanted it to go any batter who faced me did so at his own risk duster played baseball from 1915 to 1936 sometimes in the major league with the robins cleveland indians and st louis cardinals and sometimes with minor, minor league teams pitching for the Indians in 1920 World Series, Duster pitched 15 scoreless innings, giving up six hits and striking out six batters. The first unassisted triple play was accomplished during the 1920s World Series. Duster Mails died on July 5th, 1974 in San Francisco. We're back. And as I said in the very beginning of the show, today is Super Tuesday. But what exactly does that mean? It's one of the most important days of the Republican primary. Ten states are up for grabs between the four main Republican candidates, Mitt Romney, Rick Santorum, Newt Gingrich, and Ron Paul. In the very important state of Ohio with 66 delegates, Santorum and Romney will be battling it out. Gingrich is going to go after Georgia. That's his home state, and he says that it's important. He's been noticing that Santorum has been on the rise, but maybe, just maybe, Santorum is on the decline. If that's the case, Gingrich thinks that if he can take Georgia, it could be a one-on-one -on -one battle between him and Republican frontrunner Mitt Romney. On Friday's show, we will talk about the results of this important day. But that's it for today, CB. The sets today are A, B, G, C, E, D, F. Also, remember that there is school on Monday, unfortunately, despite what it says in your agendas. Online is always the best place to go. Most up-to-date information, as you guys know. For Kate, Charlie, and the rest of the KBFT crew, have a great Tuesday, and we will see you again on Friday.